As a public health practitioner, you may use many sources of information to inform your decisions about public health programs and services. In many instances, there is too much rather than too little information to sift through. So, how do you decide which information to look at first? Perhaps you've heard that systematic reviews are a good source of information. But are you really sure what a systematic review is, or how it differs from other reviews? In this video, we are going to look at various types of reviews and explain how they differ. But first, let's look at why a review is needed at all when there are so many single studies out there. Let's use healthy eating as an example to illustrate why a single study is not sufficient to inform a practice decision about using a web-based intervention to promote healthy eating among adolescents. Currently, there are thousands of single studies on promoting healthy eating. These single studies are designed to evaluate the effectiveness of interventions, but each study can only examine a small portion of the population at a time. What they learn from a very small number of people is applied to the whole population. If researchers want to know if web-based interventions are effective in improving healthy eating in adolescents, they invite adolescents to participate in a study. Some will receive the web-based intervention and some will not. Participants are compared to see if there is a difference in healthy eating between the two groups before and after exposure to the intervention. In other words, the researchers assume that what they learn from the small number of people that took part in the study is correct for all adolescents. However, I am sure you can think of times where two single studies on the same topic reported different findings. In fact, Sometimes research studies completely contradict each other. You may have asked yourself, why do different studies on the same topic produce such different results? There can be many reasons for this. One key reason is that each study is made up of a different group of participants. In our example, five studies evaluating web-based interventions to promote healthy eating will examine five different groups of adolescents. The groups may vary on many characteristics, for example, ethnicity, current eating habits, socioeconomic status, or physical activity levels. These variations in the groups could have an impact on the effectiveness of an intervention and could mean that the studies give us up to five different results. If this is the case, how can we be confident that any one study can answer our question? How would we know which of the study results could apply to our population? Public health policies and decisions should be based on all of the available studies rather than one. Combining the findings from all of the available single studies will give us a more accurate reflection of what to expect if we were to expose all adolescents in our population to an intervention. When multiple studies are summarized in this way, it is called a review. However, there are many ways to summarize research results from single studies. And the ways in which the results are summarized affects how much confidence we can have that the reported findings are in fact true. So, let's start with the most basic form of a review, a literature review. A literature review is a synthesis of more than one study. It doesn't necessarily follow a defined or systematic process in how studies are identified, how they are included, or how they are combined. In the past, literature reviews were considered standard practice for summarizing multiple studies. This approach is like someone opening a file on their computer where they save research studies, picking their favorites, and then summarizing the results. Such a review is likely to be misleading because the results can be very biased. For example, if I believe web-based interventions are an effective way to promote healthy eating in adolescents, my file will probably include studies I have found that demonstrate this effect. A review based on those studies will be biased towards my belief. Therefore, without following a clear, systematic process for identifying and including studies, literature reviews are of limited value for informing public health practice. A more methodical process for synthesizing evidence is a systematic review. The Cochrane Collaboration, which is an international organization that conducts systematic reviews, defines a systematic review as a collation of all relevant research studies in order to answer a specific research question. It uses explicit, systematic methods that are selected with a view to minimizing bias, thus providing more reliable findings from which conclusions can be drawn and decisions made. 
So what does this really mean? Let's go back to our healthy eating question to find out. Remember our question. Are web-based interventions effective in improving healthy eating among adolescents? Let's look at the steps that will occur during a systematic review to answer this question. First, a comprehensive search to identify all relevant studies will be conducted. Once the search is completed, studies will be examined to see if they are relevant to the question. Those judged relevant will be included in the systematic review, while those judged not relevant will be excluded. The relevant studies are then assessed independently by at least two people to determine how well they were conducted, and this information is recorded in tables. Data on important characteristics, such as the number and age of participants, what interventions they were exposed to, and outcome measures are then extracted from each study, again by at least two people independently and organized into tables. In the final steps of a systematic review, members of the review team discuss the findings across studies, make decisions about the effectiveness of the intervention, and then write up the results of the synthesis of the studies into one document. Before starting the systematic review, decisions on how each of these steps will be conducted are made and noted in a protocol document. It is important that no changes are made to the protocol while the systematic review is being conducted. All the details that someone would need to reproduce the review should be provided in a final report. These consistent steps mean that the findings of systematic reviews are more likely to be true and trustworthy for the population than the findings of a single study and are therefore more reliable for public health decision making. A systematic review will tell you whether an intervention is effective or not, but it will not give you an overall numerical estimate of the effect. For that type of information, you need to use a meta-analysis. I am often asked, what is the difference between a systematic review and a meta-analysis? Essentially, a meta-analysis follows all the same steps as those we just described for a systematic review. However, a meta-analysis goes one step further. It combines the findings from all the single studies included in the review into one numerical answer. This quantitative answer can provide powerful evidence to help in our decision-making. While systematic reviews tell us whether an intervention works or not, meta-analysis tell us not only whether it works, but also by how much. In our example, the systematic review of web-based interventions to promote healthy eating in adolescents tells us that the intervention improved healthy eating. The meta-analysis tells us how big or small that improvement was. For more detail on interpreting the results of a meta-analysis, see our video on understanding a meta-analysis in five minutes or less. Sometimes it is not possible to conduct a meta-analysis. For example, when there are considerable differences in the population studied, the interventions used, or the outcomes measured. In these cases, it does not make sense to combine all the findings into one answer, so a systematic review, where the results of single studies are assessed but not numerically combined, is more appropriate. In this video, we looked at the difference between three types of reviews, literature reviews, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. You also learned why systematic reviews and meta-analyses are more appropriate to guide public health decision-making than single studies. By recognizing the strengths and limitations of these reviews, it will be easier for you to make decisions about when and how to use them.